Mm -hmm. Ooh, some cherries. More softwood. Nice. Mm. Uh, got that tree. Ooh. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. Good evening, software engineers. <sighs> Just relaxing here on Tidal Pop Island, eating some cherries. You know, gotta work off that loan to Tom Nook. Uh, I think time for my my little dude here. Take a little siesta. I think I am. Hope you're doing well this evening. Oh, better not touch that power button. Don't want to lose all those cherries I just got. Hope you had a wonderful day today. It was a little rainy today, but it, it was still a pretty nice day. Played a lot of soccer outside with Sammy. It was wet, but that's not a problem. Uh, we had fun, so hopefully you had fun too. Got a little short video for you tonight. Nothing too terribly exciting. I I, I do have my Switch on this screen because I finally got my game capture working again. So my slides are over here. So occasionally I'm just going to be like, ooh, sheriff in profile as I'm trying to read my slides. So anyway, today, what do we got? Well, turns out um, Sprint Check 4 is this week. So uh, hopefully you started on that yesterday. If one of your teams was able to, to if you were ready for that, um, you know, it'd be good if you got them done by Wednesday. Thursday's fine too. It's just, you know, whenever you can talk to your TAs. If you haven't looked at the lab notes yet that I've updated, go take a look at the lab tab. <laughs> that, that, that was funny. The lab's... Uh, section of the course website. I've updated the, the the information for sprint checks four, five, and six. Please remember to do your course evaluations. Not course, ev well, do those later. Your team evaluations. Um, and if you're having any problems, please let me know as soon as possible. Um, I had some teams reach out to me. Uh, it's better if I know sooner rather than later. Reach out to your TAs. Um, yeah, we're all we're all doing our best. Completely understand. Um, you know, people have. You know, might not have been responding to team stuff and I'll check in with them like, oh, yeah, so sorry because, you know, the move back and everything. Let's just make sure everyone's cool and we can we can keep going. So no stress, no worries. We're going to keep moving forward. Focus on the core functionality. You know, you worry about just kind of sticking with your team and making progress as you go forward. I'll worry about the grading at the end of the day. It'll all work out. I promise it will. So. Uh, hopefully you get that sprint check done this week. Get the sprint check done this week. Uh, you also have quiz four came out yesterday. Sure. That's a lot of fun. I'm gonna give a little bit of lecture on maintenance, pick up more of it, um, either tomorrow or Thursday, depends on how things go. And with that, we'll come to the next guided practice and it'll be due. Eh, it'll be due after quiz four. So don't worry about that. All right. Now this worked the last time I tried it. Hopefully it works this time too. We're going to talk about maintenance, requirements, design, implementation, testing. The fifth section, the fifth phase of development. Now, the true cost of software. How long does it take to build most pieces of software? I mean, it really depends, right? You know, Flappy Bird didn't take that long. Microsoft Word did. Is that where most of the money goes, though? Is it in the creation of the software? Well, think about Windows XP. How about that one? They built Windows XP, and people used it for a decade. There's probably people still using it now. That's terrifying, but it's true. The real cost of software is not in the initial building of it. Over three quarters of the cost of software happens after you've released the software because of all the things that have to happen after you release version 1.0. Now, you might think, oh, you're just talking about things like bug fixes or, 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 or help desk stuff. Well, yeah, that's part of it, but there's actually a lot more to maintenance than just that. There is that help desk stuff. There are, there's the 
um, email support and in-person support or over the phone support or, or whatever else that requires people to be involved. There are fixing faults. You shipped software that had bugs in it. We talked about that. You have to do that. If you don't do that, you never release the software and then you can't pay anyone and then your company fails and that's just sad. So we have to release the software probably before we've done a hundred percent testing. So yeah, sometimes you do have to go back and fix faults. Sometimes they're major, sometimes they're minor, but sometimes you just got to do it because it's the right thing to do. You may want to add new features. So perhaps maybe sales of this particular app have, have um, trailed off. And so you, say, well, we're going to add Dropbox integration. We're going to add Twitter integration. I don't know. You're going to add some cool stuff. They say, oh yeah, that's, yeah, I'll go buy that now. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for the free upgrade or whatever it might be. So you do that to get more sales, but you also do it to keep your user base happy. There's plenty of software uh, packages out there where they release an update. It's like, oh yeah, here's the new features. And you're like, oh yeah, this is fantastic. And you feel better about your purchase, about the company, about the entire situation so it's a good thing to do uh the environment can change and what i mean by that is uh ios goes from 11 to 12 or 12 to 13. there a while back um with one of the ios changes which i can't remember which one it was um apple said no more 32-bit apps so you might have had some apps during this change from the 32 to everything had to be 64 that the app just stopped working and the company never released a new version and you lost some piece of functionality that you really cared about. It happens. Um, the company might have thought there was no, no monetary reason to do this. Eek. Uh, but sometimes there's not. And so, yeah, but sometimes there is. Sometimes you have to keep that software up to date. If you are building the software for, you know, like automated teller machines, yeah, you probably have to, if a new one's updated, you probably have to release new software. So, yeah. New environment does change things. Sometimes your business needs change. If you uh, change the way that your company operates, if you change, I don't know, to where credit, no credit courses can now count towards graduation when they couldn't before. I have no idea how they're going to do this. It says probably some sort of black magic. I'm kind of scared, but. Uh, and then whenever you're making these changes, well, you got to update the manual. Do you want to read that anymore? Well, you probably, someone does. So we should probably update it. Now, a problem is, is that maintenance is often seen as a dirty word in software development. They're like, ooh, I don't want to do the, 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 the cleanup stuff. I don't want to deal with, ooh, all the problems that someone else did. You want to go out and build the new software. You want to be in what's called greenfield development. Well, it turns out um, maintenance is really, really important because that's typically... The, you, you write the software so that people use it. You don't write it just to write it for, well, I mean, you can just write it for fun, but you want people to use it for years. So you have to perform maintenance. You have to make sure that software keeps being used. So maybe we call it software evolution or improvement or life cycle support, which that sounds more like it's dying, but you, you get the idea. The idea is that software is meant to be a living thing where you build the first version of it, but that's really your best first guess at what you think the software is supposed to do. Over time, you add new features, you do bug fixes, you adapt, you change things so that it moves as the needs of your customer moves, as the needs of society moves. And then that's when you really have a good software system. So like, here's a simple example. You build a really cool thing that it re requires some real custom software hardware combination that cost a lot of money. And it turns out one of the components has died. A hard disk has died. What do you do? Well, the company you made the hard disk isn't there anymore. Well, that stinks. We could buy it from another company, but then we have to build an adapter for it. Okay, that stinks too. Uh, we could try and find the old developers it left. Yee, that probably won't go over well. So. The point here is that maintenance challenges are often messy. There are often things that require some really good out of the box engineering problem solving, get in there and make it work. And some people find that super cool. And to be good at maintenance, you have to be good at every phase of development, right? Because first, 
what's going to come in is a bug report or feature request. And you have to understand requirements. You have to understand how to model what the change needs to be, how to talk to the customer, how to get through. It just doesn't work. And you say, well, let's, let's talk about it. What's not working? Why is it not working? So you have to be really good at that. Um, you have to be good at design. You have to be able to look at those UML diagrams we've been building and figure out how the system works and then figure out, well, how does my solution fit in in here? E, that can be hard. You got to be good at that. You got to be good at implementation because you have to write it. Testing, regression testing. You have to make sure you didn't fix, you didn't break anything and that you did fix the problem. So hopefully you wrote some new tests, right? And then of course, you now are in the, the maintenance por por portion where we're trying to actually push the change. So you need to understand all the DevOps stuff. To be good at maintenance means to be good at software engineering. So you shouldn't look down on being put on a maintenance team. It just means that you have to be, you know, the, the Renaissance person, that good Jeffersonian ideal where you're supposed to, you know, dabble in all of the things. So it, it, it's a problem though, because many companies, particularly maybe even the management level, look at maintenance as kind of the dirty work. It's the, oh, we got to clean this up and, and, and developers don't look at it as being something that's glamorous and it might not be glamorous. I mean, let's be honest. Um, the new product, the splashy thing, that's the thing that gets attention. Maintenance is the thing that pays the bills and keeps the light on and make sure that you still have a company. Um, it's really, really important. So it, it could be more in the naming of it. It could be more in how we talk to people about it. It could be more in how we sell it to new developers, but really and truly to be able to do maintenance well means that you are a good software engineer. So, um, you have to understand the company. You have to understand the customer. You have to understand the software itself. You have to understand good software development principles. It's, it's important. How do you put on a maintenance team? Well, some places they put people on maintenance team right when they come in because it's a good way of learning the system. You know, if you come in and it's like, okay, fix this very simple bug. Well, you have to go, okay, I need to go look at the design, understand what's going on, adapt it. Okay. And that forces you to start learning the system. That's pretty cool. Um, some places do a round robin sort of thing. So they might say, okay, um, you're on a maintenance team for four months and you're going to support these projects. And then you'll come off and start working on a new project. And then you'll go back on later. And that's a way of keeping everyone fresh on all the projects while also making it so people get a breath of fresh air and get to innovate and do new things at the same time. It, it varies from place to place. Um, but don't look down on being put on a maintenance team. It, it is super, super important. Now, right here with the categories of maintenance, I'm going to come back to this in the next video. This is actually a good break point. This is where we're going to come back and talk about, well, what are the different types of maintenance and how do we identify them and um, attack them differently? So, um, yeah, a little shorter video tonight. Uh, just wanted to get another one out there to you. Um, I'll pick up with this in the next day or so. In the meantime, Now that I got the capture card working. Oh, what a glorious sound. I'm going to get back <sighs> to some good old fashioned 8 bit gaming. Oh, I'm so glad that bird got frozen. So, software engineers, I hope you are doing well. I'm probably going to die shortly. Maybe I'll stream some speed runs of Mario or something like that. But that's that level. I hope you have a good evening. I'll get back to my game. Bye.